What is up, Empire Builders? I'm super, super, super excited for today's episode. I have a special guest on the e-commerce Empire Builders YouTube channel and podcast. If you're listening to this on the podcast, uh, Trey Llewellyn. Guys, if you don't know who Trey Llewellyn is, he is an absolute beast at sales funnels for e-commerce. He hit the Two Comma Club X Award for his e-commerce businesses, so I really wanted to have him on board because he was such an inspiration for me growing and scaling my fishing business, which eventually hit the Two Comma Club Award. So uh, we go through so many cool things in this interview. We go over continuity plans, scaling from zero to one and one to 10 million. Um, honestly, guys, this episode is so value packed. Even if you're just starting out a beginner or advanced and you're really wanting to scale, this is hugely beneficial for you. So without further ado, here is the interview. But oh, so, so firstly, yeah, thank you so much. But um, yeah, I think everybody would love to know like a little bit about more about you, those that don't know who you are. A lot of yeah. what I preach on my channel is, is sales funnels. I show the strategy that I use to scale that fishing business. But I want pe people to kind of get to know you because you were such an influence for me scaling that business and kind of modeling your success. But I want to kind of talk about your backstory. Like, how did you discover internet marketing? How did you get to the point where you're at today in your business? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, so I was, I was working in the, so my name's Trey Llewellyn. Hello, what's up? Uh, keep following this guy. He's got some good stuff going on, uh, interviewing some top peeps, that's for sure. So I was, I was, uh, I was an insurance agent six, six years ago and I was selling insurance, doing the 10%, you know, making 10% on policies and it wasn't for me. And so I was looking for an out. This kid came over, a good friend of mine, another insurance agent said, Hey, you need to check out this book called the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. And when you, when you first heard that title is just like, I don't even know what that means. Read the book. That was kind of like the light bulb that was there. Oh, Hey, you know what? There's, there's other spheres out there. Right, not just your typical doctor, lawyer, insurance agent, real estate agent, home home improvement guy, flower girl, B two B kind of thing. There was this thing called the internet that people were selling golf shirts on. I think that was one of the examples in Tim Ferriss's book, and I really clung to that. And we actually use Get Friday to this day from Tim Ferriss' book six years ago. And I knew there was something else. Um, so how did I? I found traffic and conversion with Perry Belcher, Ryan Dice. That was like one of their first events. I think there was. At the one I went to, I think they hit a thousand people. Maybe they're at seven hundred. It was a pretty big event, from what I from I remember. And there's, I sit by this kid. I'm sitting by this kid that was probably I was I was probably twenty uh, twenty six at the time, twenty seven somewhere in there. And this kid was probably 21, 19 years old, right, just chilling. And I'm like, bro, like, well, you know, what are you doing? What are you doing here? And he's like, oh, I'm just learning, you know, do my thing. I was like, well, how much? How much are you bringing in? In per month he goes ah, oh, usually around like ten thousand dollars i was like per month because i was making 60 grand as an insurance agent minus all my overhead so realistically i was bringing in like two grand a month barely scraping poverty level i was like real close to you know applying for food stamps and i'm sitting by this kid he's making 10 grand I'm like okay well, that's cool i'm trying to act not impressed right but my mind is just blown and i go well how do you how do you sell ten thousand dollars a month he goes oh through this thing called a facebook page i was like oh that's cool i said what do you post? He's like, oh, I just post all these cat things, like cat pictures, cat uh, videos, cat stuff. I was like, oh, that's a genius idea. So you're just selling cat stuff, doing the videos. That's amazing. He was like, oh, no, we sell pipes. <laughs> pipes? He's like, yeah, we just sell pipes. Like, it's cool. Like, we just sell, you know, metal pipes and stuff. I was like, by showing cat videos? And my mind at that point was just, Oof. And so I'm listening to... You know, the big man on stage, Perry Belcher, Ryan Dice, just deliver this amazing content. My pen can't write fast enough. I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't afford a good ticket. So I was in the back, no electricity. So my laptop in the first three hours was dead. I had an old laptop and I'm just writing as fast as I can. And that's kind of how it got, how I got introduced. And I, I got a mentor. Uh, I found this kid named Adam. Me and Adam kind of hooked up and he wanted, he wanted like a thousand bucks a month to, for me to see what he was doing and come to find out I was his first like guinea pig, didn't even know that. And he just, you know, texted me. He's like, do you want to see how you do it or not? You Are you in? And I was like, I guess we'll see how it goes. Like, or else I'm going to live under a bridge. <laughs> and he kind of gave me the Facebook world, went and got Carl White as a mentor, uh, Tanner Larson as a mentor. And, and 10 others as mentors and just really started investing in, in mentors. And this is before like Facebook groups, this is for podcasts, this is before like all that stuff. Like this is, 
the first of the internet kind of twist and I just started investing as much as I could because no one, no one person had all the answers, right? Someone knew how to do Facebook really well, so I learned Facebook. Someone knew how to do headlines really well, so I learned headlines. Someone knew how to do copy really well, so I learned copy. Someone knew how to build a funnel and optimize, learn that. So then, then I was able to start connecting these pieces together, which turned into the kind of like, oh, okay, so Facebook ads, build an audience and, and sell t-shirts that at no risk because we didn't, we didn't have any inventory. We didn't want any inventory. We didn't have, dude, I started with a $5,000 credit card. That's what I started with. And we built, you know, the, the multi-million businesses we have today from a $5,000 credit card. It's absolutely stunning. So like for those people who are just kind of getting started or like think that there's no way out or no way in, um, there is like, I didn't, I didn't have any money. Like I, I had, I was freaking, I was looking like I had money, mm -hmm. but I didn't have any money. <laughs> you know, I was, I, was rolling, I was rolling one of those and shoo, it's uh, it's amazing. But the thing is, is, you know, no matter where you're at and you probably can say this too, is like you get to a point and you're like, damn, like six months ago, I wished I was at the point I am today. But now that I'm here, that was pretty easy. I'm at that point, mm -hmm. right? So you keep, you keep stepping, you keep leveling up. And there's always pains, there's always growing pains to those different levels of, of business. And you know, you're, you're gonna get pains for your first dollar. Uh, you're gonna get pains at your first customer service uh, call. You're gonna have pains at your first you know, better business bureau uh, mailer coming in saying, "Hey, oh my God. I still uh, remember yeah. my first one there." Oh wait my up, you know, wait up, wait up, you know, they're, and they're like haters, right? Like paragraphs of hate just going in. By the way, I'll be the first one to tell you, no one goes to the BBB <laughs> to give a positive review. Okay, that is totally not someone's. The BBB is the freaking mafia. Preach, I'll tell you, I'll tell you that right now. They're, they're freaking crazy. Uh, so. Yeah, don't 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 look at the BBB. They're just freaking <laughs> frauds, is what they are. But they but they go after frauds, is what what the claim is. Or your first attorney general general's office uh, a letter. Those are always great. So we've we've been through a lot, man. We've we've done a lot of stuff. I could tell you, we could be on here for five hours, and I could tell you stories of just some crazy stuff that happened. We had a guy who would just call our office, our customer support team. And he would tell these girls, these girls, like they're, you know, they're just trying to make a paycheck. He would be like, I'm coming over there right now with a baseball bat. I'm going to, I'm going to put your head in. And these girls come and run in the office. are like, he's going to come in with a baseball bat and like kill me. I'm like, okay, hold up. First off, he lives in Virginia. He called from Virginia. He's chatting in from Virginia. He's not coming in here with a baseball bat. Secondly, we have security. It's good. We'd also have like police officers that would come and visit often. And uh, they would get calls like someone, we were selling so many items, physical items just going out the door because we didn't have our systems in place where we couldn't answer the phone quick enough. We couldn't answer our emails quick enough. We were, I walked in one day and I'm looking at the screen of how many phone calls have come in, it's 9 a.m. We've had 4,000 phone calls and I got four dudes on the phone. One guy can answer about 100 calls a day and I got 4,000 already in by 9 a.m. We had 15,000 calls come in that day. Wow. People were just, wanting their order but we were we were backlogged we sold too much we had we had seventy thousand orders in, in backlog so we, we couldn't get we couldn't get them out fast enough we had we had a, a 40 foot container held in anchorage alaska which had <laughs> units upon units of of product in it and it had to be sent back because there's no country of origin on each item made from china mm -hmm. so we had to ship a 40 foot container, which just arrived by sea, which takes 30 to 45 days to get there, ship it back for a month and a half, have the little people put stickers on, ship it back to the US, go through customs again, and then roll down to good old Missouri, <laughs> right? So I, there's growing pains at every level uh, of business. Yeah, I always, I always tell people that. It's like, really, you're just gonna get a whole new set of problems even as you scale. Like really, the grass is never really greener, unfortunately, in this business. Nah, but, it's, it, but, it, but it's what's cool is you control it. Exactly, exactly. Right? it's like, worth it. Like you get, you, like we just, we, just, uh, we just got back from Destin, like two, two, uh, two days, three days ago now, I guess a week ago. But, um, but two weeks prior to that, uh, you know, I asked the girlfriend, I was like, hey, what do you think about going to Destin on Thursday, right? She's like, sure, let's go. So we bought tickets. Grabbed a, grabbed a condo and we went down for three days. And that's, 
that's the bo that's the bonus of having yeah, you got the freedom your business. You're kind of mentioned before we started here is you know getting a having a CFO, having a chief operating officer, having a, ch a chief financial officer. And if you're just starting out, you, one you can't afford that. I get it, right? But there's people out there that do hourly services. You can have a virtual COO. You can have a virtual CFO. Uh, you know, someone someone who just comes in for two hours a week or two hours a month and just kind of gets a gets a handle on things. How is everything looking? Because what you'll run into is when you grow too quick or too fast, you don't know your numbers, and that'll that'll take you down real quick. Mm -hmm. I, I had a good friend who who is running a business right now, or they ran a business, and they are selling uh, hats during a campaign, and they thought they were doing really good, right? Uh, really well. They're selling tons of hats. They're rocking and rolling. Did two hundred fifty thousand dollars in sales uh, in over like a two month span. And come to find out, they were off on their numbers by a by a, by a nickel. And instead of being twenty grand in the profit, 20, 30, 40 grand in profit, they're actually negative twenty, thirty grand. So they lost. So when they thought they were doing great, they're scaling up. They're like, yeah, let's go. They're off by a nickel on one of their costs of goods. And whoops, yeah. forgot it. Right, just lost track of numbers. So you always want to make sure you got your numbers down. You know exactly what your costs are, your, you know, your, your what your employees are costing you. If you have employees, some of you guys are just hustling every, all the hats, right? That's the, the problem. Track. It's like, you know, people are always scared. They want to do everything. And in the beginning, yeah, you got to, unfortunately. But got as to. soon as you can, reinvest that money back into getting somebody that can do it better than you. Like me with accounting and stuff, I hate that. Or any sort of legal um, mm. you know, documents like that. I'd rather just pay somebody, you know, a couple thousand bucks to, you know, do it for me, right? And a lot of people need to learn to let go little pieces like that in their business so they can, you know, work on their business versus in it, you know? Yeah, I say, I say, you know, like, so I struggled with that delegation. And uh, Tim Ferriss, funny enough, is where he comes in on that book, that four hour work week. And he go, he says, you know, if you're, if you're worried about letting the reins over to someone that of, of your business, your baby, right? Like that's kind of like calling care.com up and be like, hey, watch out for my baby for five hours and then you hope that, it, hope that it's still there when you come back, right? So the same thing with the businesses, sometimes it's a little sketch with someone coming in, uh, uh, you know, getting access to your database, getting access to your customers, getting access to your merchant, getting access to the download, like all that stuff. So what I recommend is have, have someone do other chores that currently are taking up your time like cleaning the house, laundry, mowing the lawn. I used to make a joke that Amazon paid me to mow the lawn because we were using Amazon as an affiliate marketing tool. It doesn't make you any money. It's good for data, but it brought, it brought in like 40 bucks, right? So I would just use that cash to pay the, the lawn guy, like a kid, 20 bucks a month, you know, 20 bucks every two weeks to mow the lawn. So then I just saved myself two hours, mm -hmm. right? So like delegate that way first in your personal life. What about like even grocery shopping? So if you look at how much time you do grocery shopping there at a grocery store, planning out the groceries, what are we having for dinner tonight, cooking the dinner, cleaning up the dinner, dude, it's tons. It takes up a ton time. of time. Yeah, outsourcing that kind of stuff as well, like especially if you can, I agree, like those little time sucks that take, take up your entire time, like laundry. There's even laundry things that they'll just come to your house, pick up your laundry, and then bring it back to you folded. Like. It's great. <laughs> Thank you very much. Come again, right? I'm totally willing to pay for all of that because you just you just work up to it, mm -hmm. right? Can you get all that at once? Maybe, maybe not. But at the end of the day, if you're just starting out on a business, start with one. Just start with the long mow. Start with the laundry. Start with, you know, like what I did is I hired a chef. So comes in, cooks, does all that stuff. But maybe maybe not at a chef level, okay? Maybe just do like fuelmeals.com. Mm -hmm. And it's great meals, good for you, healthy. And you go out there and you grab meals and you ship them in. Learn that from Lady Boss. They're a great, great, great company. And mm -hmm. there you go. You're good. You're good. Right? A, sa a time saver. Put it in the toaster oven. Cook that little meal up. <laughs> eat it real quick. Trash. Exactly. On, on to the next big thing, right? Exactly. So um, I'm not sure if a lot of people on here know, but uh, Trey hit the Two Comma Club X Award. So you did over $10 million in your sales funnel. You probably did way over that, I'm assuming. Um, but I wanted to get your advice for people just starting out, because like just thinking of that number, it's like so intimidating. Like, what was like your mindset shift from going to like starting from that zero to like a million dollar business, and then like the shift from one million to ten million? Because like that's something I've never done. 
Mm. You know, like what are the shifts in your business just besides even hiring like the best people um, in terms of like, oh, getting the, you know, a Facebook ads person or a Google AdWords person. But like what other shifts did you have to make in like both yourself, like managing yeah. your time and then actually scaling the business? Funny, funny enough is uh, so with our business, we sell guns and ammunition. So you, you said you had the fishing thing. That's a great niche because Facebook's could take, you know, could care less with us. They care a lot. And so much so that we don't advertise on Facebook. Uh, we we may maybe spend eight hundred dollars a month, maybe a thousand bucks a month on Facebook. It's like not, not much. So we've had to find different marketing channels to get to those levels. And I'll be the first to tell you is the world of funnels is not just funnels in Facebook. There's so many more opportunities that are out there that exist. Like I'm putting together a program right now called Reactive Startups. And that's all about not having to spend any money. I'm, ta I'm talking zero money and making money. And I'm, that, like that's gonna be huge because some people don't have money. Some mm -hmm. people don't have, they have time, right? It's like when you go to church, they ask, they either ask you for money or for time. To volunteer or do you got money? Because some people got money, so they give money, right? Because they don't have time. But other people have tons of time, but they have no money. It's funny how that works, right? Mm -hmm. Hmm, which one you got? You can't have both. Maybe mm -hmm. you do. But let me, let me show you how, how I construct it. Is So a lot of people look at the million dollar piece, right? Like, oh, I want the Lambo or I want that Rolls Royce. So I want a, really, a $2 million house or I want to go build a $30,000 kitchen for my wife or whatever it is, right? Whatever your goal is. Like Instagram is a lot of, a lot of craziness, like the private jets or the nice watches. Like you see all that Instagram, like millionaire dudes going on. Oh man, that's, that's so prevalent in the YouTube community. <laughs> oh, same thing on YouTube? Like all the Shopify drop shipping gurus. I'm like, okay. <laughs> oh yeah, made so much money. So how, here's how I look at it, man, is your brain, like you said, it's too complex. Maybe, especially if you've never made it before, especially if you've never made a million dollars. Like for insurance, dude, I was making 60 grand and realistically I was making like 30, 25 to 30 a year. Like, uh, dude, poverty level. And if someone would have walked into my door and said, hey, I'm going to show you how to make a million dollars, I'd be like, okay, buddy. <laughs> hey, um, go on down to the next guy. Go down to the bank or something. Because like a million dollars, bro, that's like, that's like movie. That's like drug money. That's like mafias walking in the door with a suitcase and clipping up and then boom, you want this money? You got to sell some cocaine, but do you want it, right? Do you want this money? That's what I that's what I felt like when someone walk in and say a million bucks. So how I look at it now and with mentors and with uh, students and with, you know, just like this is I look at it like this. So you got you got a million bucks. I hope this isn't backwards or else I got to write backwards. Oh, look at that's that. good. That's good. So you got, so you got a million dollars. That's what your goal is, right? For a year or something. So what I say is, all right, well, in your in that case, what we want to do is we want to take a million dollars. And we want to look over it over the course of, of 12 months. That's how, that's how I look at it. Okay. That's the first number. The first number to know is $83,000, 333. That's what you have to bring in per month. 83 grand to be at a million dollars, right? Like that's what you, that's pushing. That's making some, whew, like we, Someone, again, someone coming up, you make 60 grand, right? Yeah, I make 60 grand a year. It takes you how long a year to make 60 grand? What if I showed you how to make 60 grand in one month, right? <laughs> I'd be like, scam, <laughs> you know? Like that's, that's my thought. That was my thought process. I didn't have an open mind or a, a mind of growth, my, a growth mindset of how that's even possible. Yeah, there's people that, like there, there would be this lady that rolled up in a Mercedes, like one of this beautiful, like 600, seven, like crazy series Mercedes. I look at my other guy. I was like, "Damn, that's a nice car." And he goes, "Dude, that 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 lady's loaded. Like her husband was this, you know, blah blah blah, loaded." I was like, "Wow, must be nice, right?" Because I didn't have a growth mindset. So first thing is get your mind right. But secondly is now if you take that eighty three thousand, and we go on to a daily level of thirty days, then that brings you down to the lucky number, right? I call I call this the Vegas number, the two thousand seven hundred seventy seven bucks. So just remember the three sevens. Right, Ka-ching. That's how I look at that. So with that, that's not too bad. So I got to bring in twenty seven hundred bucks a day. All right. So that brings it a little bit easier. So if I bring in twenty seven hundred dollars a day, every day, that means I'll green. I'll I'll be at a million dollars in one year in three hundred sixty five days. 
Now, let's break, what I like to do is break that down a little bit more because let's say you have a um, $100 product, okay? I'm selling, I don't know, selling light bulbs, right? Light, light fixtures or cameras or something like that, 100 bucks. Well, that means I only have to sell, what, 27, 27 units today. Or if I got, if I'm selling a $50 product, I'm selling, or I'm doing uh, 54 units today. Right and so on and so forth. So if I did if I did a twenty five dollar product, I'm I'm selling. Uh, let's see, what is that? Hundred units a day. Yeah, hundred units. Right. You add continuity into that, then it's way less. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you're telling me if I could go on the side of the streets and I could sell a hundred units of twenty five bucks, that's not too bad. That's not too shabby. So I need I either need twenty five conversions today, twenty seven at hundred bucks cart value, or a hundred conversions at a $25 cart value, right? And that's, a, that's an easy free plus shipping right there, as you well know, right? That's a $25 average cart. So if you got uh, a $7 front end offer or a $9 front end offer, double it on the back, you're at your 25 bucks, right? Ridiculously you got easy to hit that. That's, a mil that's yeah. easily a million dollars a year. That's, this right here is what the brain can handle. Mm -hmm. Right. But we try, but when you say, when some people, some come, someone says, Hey, I want to make a million dollars. It's like, whoo. But when someone comes to you and says, Hey, can you sell, you know, 25 units at a hundred bucks or vice versa? That's not, that's not too shabby. Mm -hmm. Right. Or, or if you break this down one an hour. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Right? Yeah, you just that's start it. breaking the numbers down into more like a, a comprehensible number that you can actually hit, you know, setting that kind of daily goal for yourself. Dude, that's all it is, man. I got to sell, I got to sell four units an hour. I got to sell one every 15 minutes to break, to break a million. That's all I got to do. Mm -hmm. Right. That's not, that's how it is. And then you're, you're saying, Oh man, 10 million. Woo, how do you do that? Right. Same way, <laughs> same way, bro. Now here's, here's where you, where you expand on this. Okay. So if you're wanting to do a million, you're like, man, damn, like one an hour or, or, or whatever. But here's the cool piece. If I got uh, one product in our, in our terminology, one funnel, okay, doing, I don't know, uh, 15 units a day, that's not going to hit my, hit my nut. But if I got a second product I'm selling, like in your case, fishing poles, and that's doing 15 a day. And then I got another one, maybe, maybe I'm selling um, uh, tackle boxes, okay? And that one's doing 15 a day. So you're doing a million dollars, right? So that's why if you ever watch any of the videos that we've put out, it's like funnel today, funnel week, funnel week, funnel mm -hmm. week. We're building funnels. Are they all gonna be amazing like home runs? No, right? Blockbuster funnels, absolutely not. But there's gonna be ones that sell five a day. There's gonna be ones that sell 15. There's gonna be ones that sell 50. But what's cool with that is they all average out to making a million dollars uh, a year. And then when, when you put into uh, your back end services, so you have your, like a lot of people just concentrate on this alone, just the single units, right? So everybody's concerned of, man, I gotta sell, I gotta sell uh, uh, five, five, five cell phones today. I gotta sell five you know, coffee cups today five bracelets today to make a million bucks. But what they're not seeing or not even looking at is the ascension piece to their business, right? They're, they're so concentrated on right here while the competition is looking at this big piece right there. Mm -hmm. That's the big, that's where you make your money. This is the, this is the million dollar mark. This is the $10, $10 million to $50 million mark. Cause you're sending them, you're, you're taking them up from where they, they started at, you got them to raise their hand. That's all, that's all this was to do. These are, that's all that is there for. And just to, so to clear that up for, for people watching who might be like kind of new to the, the funnel game, yeah. like that, that first, put yeah. That, put that in good terminology for me. Yeah. So that first value ladder step would essentially be like a free plus shipping offer or like a big discount funnel that you're acquiring customers into, right? Is that kind of what you're? Totally. Yeah, and then kind of ascending them from there, like your continuity offers, more mid-range products, high-level high, range, high products as well. Um, so I'm curious how a lot of people always, um, this is like probably the most common question you get asked as well, is like, how do you find products? Hey, how do you find good products? And like, I always say, you know, selling an offer to 
an audience is a lot better than just going after a single product because you're a commodity at that point. You're just competing on a price. So I kind of want to know what is your strategy like when you're evaluating products like or for winners or when you're about to launch a new offer for, to your current customers? Like how do you kind of find what they want to buy? Yeah, it's extremely revolutionary of how we do it. Uh, it blow your mind. So what we do is when we sell products, uh, we call them. Anybody who buys, anybody who doesn't buy, okay? And I say, hey, this is Trey Llewellyn, CEO of whatever company we're calling from. Notice that you didn't purchase uh, our fishing lures, okay? Wanted to follow up on that. What could, what could we have done better as a company for you to purchase those fishing lures? Oh, well, you know what? I didn't like the color or I wasn't sure of the weight of the product or I wasn't sure if it would fit my poles or, or catch the fish I was looking to catch. Well, sir, what kind of fishing fish are you trying to catch? I'm trying to catch bass. Oh, okay, that makes sense because these are not for bass. These are for something else, right? So what lures, sir, are you going to go out and purchase today for, for the bass? Oh, I got to tell you, I got this one that I've been, my friends have been telling me about. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah, tell me more about that. What's that look like? Well, here's where I get it from. Here's what it looks like. Here's what it does. Perfect. So then guess what? I go to the next guy. Hey, sir, saw that you'd purchased or did not purchase our product today. What could we have done better to, to assist you, to make you, you know, to have you purchase that? And by the way, we're kind of looking at this other product that does this, that catches bass. It looks like this, has this, does this. Would that be something you'd be interested in? Dude, I, I tell you what, like I just purchased this, but I'd be actually more interested in that than I am this. Okay, well, that's pretty sweet. That's how we do it. That's awesome. Yeah, like I think phone calls are is like a lost art in, in e-commerce especially. Absolutely, like yeah. nobody does it. And I'll be honest, like until the end of that fishing business, we weren't doing it. But then we started following up with people that like that was our abandoned car strategy, which is calling them. Just you know, you you got the information from your customer already, follow up with them, see what you know, see where they were at in the buying process and kind of yeah. why they left or how else you can kind of serve them. It is, uh, it's funny because all like the e-commerce, it's so funny. There's such a dis, this, uh, detachment with the e-commerce piece. This is how I, this is, this is exactly what's happening right now. Hey, sir. Hello. Would you like to buy uh, this pen? Yeah, I'll take that pen. Great. Okay. So. <laughs> and that's the show folks. <laughs> He's coming back. I swear. They don't come back. <laughs> they don't come back. Right? Yeah. Like they sold, like yeah. he's like, oh, he sold the pen. Like, don't talk to him. Don't say anything to that guy. Right? Same thing in continuity. Hey, you want to, you want, hey, you want, you want to buy a subscription? I'll, get, I'll send you a box every single month of paper towels. You will absolutely love these paper towels. And I'll give you a trial today for a dollar. Right? And then they take the trial. Then you don't talk to him. It's like, oh man, he's in our continuity program. Do not, do not say anything to that guy. Don't tell him, don't talk to him, take him off our email list, take him off our pure chat list, take him off our Facebook bots. Do not send him anything. Right? Dude, I remember this when we had when we first built up our continuity program. I was so scared to email them. I was like, don't email them. They're going to cancel. They're going to cancel. Like just leave them alone. Let them be. Don't talk to them. You know, we don't need them anymore. We we got everything we could ever want from them. Oh my goodness, that's so funny. It's but very it's, true, though. It's so when true. You, and when you do the exact opposite, you become the rarity. Mm -hmm. It's right? all about a customer experience for them, right? Don't treat them differently than every other company that stops communication after they've gotten their money, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So we, what we've done is we've created an onboarding team. So this is, this is their intake call. So as soon as someone becomes a member of any continuity program of ours, they're hit with a, with a, a little box that says, hey, Thanks for grabbing the continuity. So that's the number one reminder, right? Because there's there is some people who who accidentally click that upsell button, right? And they don't want it. So what a great opportunity for them to let us know that they don't want it or they don't understand what they just purchased. Okay. Secondly, is we have them schedule a time with our onboarding staff. Our onboarding staff comes in every day. They see how many calls they have. Those those onboarding staff are emailing out and texting out up until that hour. Hey, don't forget about our call. Hey, call in one hour, call in five hours, right? Hey, I'm calling you right now. Get on the phone with them and then we walk them through the website. Okay, we walk them through what they just purchased, how to access the content, how to, how to be in the, in the continuity, like how to use it effectively, how to make sure you understand what you're paying for, 
right? And here's what's a really interesting thing. We get a hold of 75% of the people who become a member, okay, of our continuity programs. Of that, the people who we contact have a very, very, very low cancellation rate. The people who we never talk to, can't get a hold of, they put the wrong number in, whatever, high cancellation. Very, very extreme high because they don't know how to log in. They never got connected. They don't know what website. They don't know what their credit card statement's gonna say. They don't know the value of what they just purchased. That's a big takeaway, is having an onboarding team that reaches out and says, hello, we wanted to get you on, on the call. Some calls last five minutes, right? Some people don't even need help, all right? I got it. I know how to do all this stuff. I'm tech savvy, I got this. Other people are like, Yo, phew, I'm glad you called because I've been trying for the last two hours to log in and I can't figure it out. Well, hey, let me help you with that. Let's walk you through that, right? So there's an onboarding. And you're kind of giving them that, that like sense of community right? Like they're more or less likely to cancel. Do you guys offer anything like that? Do they have like a Facebook group that they're part of where they can kind of talk to one another? Like just because I remember hearing this on, I think Lady Boss had like an interview with somebody and they said the same thing. They were like, once you build up that community of people, like they would feel so bad if they canceled and left the community now. Totally. So they're in the cult, right? They're exactly. Culture. The culture, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. So we, we, they know they can call us, right? They know that they can chat into us. They know they can email us and they know that they can, they can be on the fa- in the private Facebook group. Absolutely. So real quick, cause a lot of people, um, I think they get scared about like the management of a continuity program. Mm-hmm. Like I know. And the thing is like continuity programs, they're so different for every single business. Like for me, I knew my customers would love like a physical product, right? They'd love more yeah. fishing lures every single month. Yeah. Um, in your case, I believe you're doing like, you know, better deals for, you know, ammunition and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So how do you like judge what kind of, con- like when you're working with, let's say your students, like how do you decide what kind of continuity program that person should have? Like, in, like maybe an access to an information product sort of thing or, mm-hmm. you know, a subscription box. Like how do you kind of best judge that? I call them. That's <laughs> what we do. Yeah. We, with all our students. Uh, we get, we, we, we have a time where we give them scripts and all these customers who bought a front end product, in your case, a lure, let's say you didn't have a continuity program, right? A lure, they just bought a fishing pole from you. They bought a tackle box from you, whatever. And you're like, man, I, whew, I just got to put a continuity program together. What can I do? And we go over examples. Like we get, we spend days on this stuff, but at the end of the days, what we do is once we have our idea or our mind around continuity programs, the idea, the concept of, of how we can build them. Then, then we call them. We call, we call everybody who's purchased from us or everybody who's opted in with a phone number and we reach out and we have a candid conversation with them. You know, a lot of people think that it's going to be, a lot, here's what a lot of people think is going to happen. They call the number, the dude, the dude answers and says, go F yourself, right? Like, I don't want to, don't call me. I've never had a call where that happens, okay? If anything, they're like, hey, I'm, I'm super busy. I understand that we, we're, you're trying to do something, but um, can, I call you, can I call you later? Can you call me later? Sure, absolutely. Right. But the thing is, is we do a couple factors is one, we, we are the CEO. So that holds a lot of authority when you, when you make that phone call, right? Cause no one ever receives a call from the CEO of a business ever. No one ever does. It elevates their status kind of right there. The status goes way out off the charts. And so when they answer and you say, Hey, this, Hey, this is Peter CEO of fish and tackle. Wanted to reach out to the, I saw that you bought our lures really appreciate that. Secondly is, I'd love to pick your brain a little bit and see kind of what, what are you in any type of, you know, recurring income or recurring uh, uh, monthly subscription boxes or, or articles or sh- TV shows surrounding the world of, of fishing? Do you buy DVDs online? You get one every month. Like what, 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 what do you, what do you wish that if you could wave a magic wand, okay, and have any type of subscription channel box delivery system, whatever that is, what would that look like? What is the world missing? And everybody loves to give their comment, mm-hmm. right? And they're and they're and they're 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 thinking of what should what should be out there in the world because they, they so many people have ideas, right? And they're like, oh man, if if I could ever quit my job, I would just go build this. So they have these ideas in their head or things that they wish they had. And when you, when you come a calling, boy, I tell you what, you're going to get that idea. Yeah. And, and then what you do is you start to mix match that. So you never want to you never want to seed an idea. You never want to seed a continuity program into somebody when you're calling them. 
So I would never call your fishing people and say, hey, would you love receiving a box with uh, tackle gear in it? Would you love that? Would you pay for that? Right, because that seeded the, the idea. It's either yes or no. And you're, you're trying to move them into a yes, right? Just as, as, a, as, a, as a business partner. So you have to come in as an unbiased and say, leave it, leave it totally open, right? Like, hey, if there was a, a magical subscription out there that just, man, it, it just floored you, what would that be? And let them talk. Let them tell you what that is. And they'll, they'll tell you exactly what they think. Um, and, and they'll go through it. And then you, you write it down as an idea. And then as you're calling everybody else, there's going to be people who don't know, right? They're like, oh, man, I, I'm good where I'm at. Like, I just love, uh, you know, getting a little fishing tackle here. I love, you know, just outdoor fishing. I, I've never really done a, a subscription box. So that's when you take the other guy's ideas, right, of everybody else who you've talked to and said, well, I was talking to Tim. He's another fisher guy. He actually bought some lures from us too. He was kind of saying something like this. Would that be of interest to you? Oh, wow. I, I never even thought about <laughs> something like that before. Man, I, what, what, what would you, and I asked this on the call, what would you feel safe paying for something like that every month? What, what would be the dollar amount you'd be, you know, that's, that's, that's a deal. That's a, that's a steal right there, or that's well worth it. And where, what it really comes down to is the value has to outweigh the cost. Mm -hmm. No matter what you purchase in life, if you're going to stay subscribed, the value has to outweigh the cost. For instance, ADT, right? They have a security system. The value outweighs the cost of you getting kidnapped and dying with a gun pointed at your head, right? You're, the value is great mm -hmm. because for 40 bucks a month, I know I'm safe, right? Or hey, for $150, I get to make unlimited phone calls and texts and all this stuff because the value here is well worth the $150 I'm spending to have this phone. Or internet, right? When you're paying for internet, we pay $1,000 a month for our freaking internet, mm -hmm. right? But the value of having the call center, voice over IPs, if that's our blood, that's our, that's our, that's our heart, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's, whew, if we lose that, that core, like our whole call center goes down. Yeah. Right? So we need that. That's our backbone to the company. So when you're creating a continuity system, you want to make sure that the value outweighs the cost mm -hmm. of what they're paying or else they'll cancel. You know, exactly. if they don't see the value, if they don't see it, then they're can't, they're calling you to cancel. They're calling their bank to cancel, uh, or their email and be like, take me off to this freaking continuity. It sucks. Yeah. Right. Or they go to the DVB. Yet. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's fun. I love that idea because they're essentially creating their own irresistible offer and then it's you're just, you and then you're you. just serving it up to them. That's, I love it. You're just giving it to them. Well, here's, here's the reason is. In the world of, uh, run out of room, but in the world of, of a niche, right? You have, you, have the, you have the massive sphere, okay? And this sphere inside there, that's all fishermen of, all, of every type, every kind, blah, 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 blah. But what's also within here is a smaller tribe of fishermen. And these people are the people who uh, know of all the new products that are coming out. They, they're very educated. They're, they know and look for different things and, and, and they try different things. They're, they're putting reviews out there. They're very into the niche, mm -hmm. okay? So like for instance, if you're at the gym, right? And, and, and this big trainer comes over and he's like, hey man, I love how you're working out. You're really doing some bicep curls on that. But have you ever tried like putting a resistance band with the weight? Ooh, that's mm -hmm. way different, dude. I gotta get some resistance bands. Whole new type of thinking, right? Mm -hmm. So what he did was he connected. He connected the two. So this people are unaware, okay, out here. These people are aware. And what they're doing is little by little, these guys are creating awareness to the outside sphere. And then what I say is it is your job to create awareness around new products coming to the market. So how you do that is you make those phone calls, you email out to your customers. Hey, what's the latest and greatest product you're using right now? What is the something that is on your wish list to have? And what you'll find is cream will, will surface, right? It'll, it'll be one product or it'll be a type of product or a type of uh, digital media, like whatever it is. And then your job is to go and grab that, go and put a funnel around it mm -hmm. and then spread because these people don't know about that yet. But this is high frequency. Like people want this. It's big. So if you're able to create awareness to this massive sphere, dude, that's money. Mm -hmm. Massive amounts of money. Yeah, I mean, I love that. I, I love that the way you said that. That's a great perspective on it. Um, so if somebody's like trying to get in, like a lot of people aren't doing continuity. I think it's still like massively underutilized, especially in sales funnels. 
Yeah. So if somebody's trying to get into it, like, what are like the critical apps that you'd have them use? Like for me, if, if I recommend somebody, I'll be like, just at least start with like just su Stripe subscriptions just to get start getting some people in there. But like when you were scaling, like, I mean, I don't even know how many you've probably have a ridiculous amount of continuity members now, but like, how do you efficiently manage that? Right? Like what, what kind of apps are like helping you, you manage that on a daily basis? Well, so yeah, I, I wish I could answer that. That uh, that that's a big problem. That's an issue, right? Because even with even with Stripe, um, Stripe doesn't really have a great system. Like you can do a download CSV. You can see how many people like are, are in each continuity, which is kind of nice. But if somebody declines or if somebody cancels, you gotta go. You gotta go search. And, and a big a big problem with that is if you got thirty call if you got ten call center agents, if you got five employees all five employees have to have access to your Stripe account, yeah. right? They're going to see everything like that. It's like, yep, there's our business. Welcome. Like, this is what we're doing, right? They're going to they're gonna see if you're going up or if you're tanking, yeah. right? Like, yeah, we're losing a lot of sales right now, guys. Like, did you see the graph today? Like, we're going down. So, like, you, you know, you got to watch out for that. But the thing is, is you need a good CRM uh, to manage it all. Like, something that's, that's, that's able to pull CSVs or to pull dashboards and there, there isn't a great solution, you know, like no one's created the number one over like overall solution. Like we still pull CSVs and a lot of our stuff we're looking at, uh, you know, Salesforce right now to see how that can, how that can integrate with a lot of our current programs and, and things that we're, uh, uh, pushing through because they're like, there's systems out there, but they don't do everything mm -hmm. right. Like there's recurly, but recurly charges over and above the percentage that the merchant charges that'll screw you hmm. real quick because dude that's just more money you're losing off the bottom line it's cutting you at the knees and when you're when you're talking free plus shipping offers you need every penny to count mm -hmm. right so stripe is a great start uh you know you can get up to probably five to ten thousand units or ten thousand members doing that and then once you get surpassing that you, you uh you know you need to look at some sort of merger with some big crm because you can afford it you know even at you know, a thousand members at 20 bucks a month, that's 20 grand. That's $240,000 a year. You can take a little of that money and plug it in somewhere to a CRM that can make it manageable. But when you're getting started, you can't afford any of that. Mm -hmm. So you got to start with Stripe. It's free. Start with ClickFunnels. It's cheap, uh, but, but, you know, powerful. And just kind of start with that and go with it. That's, that's, that's how we started. Yeah, exactly. Same with me. It's like, just start doing it and then you'll, figure it out along the way. It's kind of like, that's like the best way to learn. Right. So, um, some of the strategies that you've been using to like get people to say yes to your continuity offer. Like I kind of shared the one before we started here was we just broke even on our introductory box, right. And just yeah. added that into it. Cause it wasn't really a cost. We're shipping it all together anyway. So we're mm -hmm. willing to break even knowing that four or five months down the line, we're already that average customer saves was four or five months. So we're willing yeah. to break even. Um, yeah. So what strategy have you used? I, I, have you, did you do like dollar trials or like what kind of other offers did you do to get people saying yes to your continuity? Mm. So we did dollar trials. Uh, well, we, did, we didn't really do a dollar trial. We did a fake trial on, a, on an upsell and uh, we got hit hard with chargebacks because it was like, hey, we'll throw in an extra whatever and you'll become a member today, right? And there was no onboarding process. There was no welcome emails. There was no follow up. And so we got hit hard and that was a great learning experience. Uh, so we, 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 we stayed away from doing trials and upsells and we do full blast pricing. We do, Hey, it's 20 bucks a month. Here's what you get. Or it's, you know, whatever you're selling hundred bucks a month, or if it's, it's $200 a year, a yearly program or a monthly program. But I think the biggest thing is, is you can only sell your box one way. And that's, we got a box to sell you, right? Like, Hey, do you want the box? You don't want the box and you can only send an email to that offer so many times before people are just like, it's a box. I've seen yeah. the box. Like it's, it's there. Right. And there's only going to be so many people that click that email that says, Hey, we're doing something really cool. It's called a subscription box. Do you want to be in how you get around that is you put a front, uh, a loss leader or a front end product before it because someone might want a lure but not a fishing pole or a tackle box, okay? So it's like, hey, we're giving away free lures today. If you want one, come grab it. Oh man, I need some lures, I'll go grab that. And then boom, the first upsell is, hey, by the way, we're doing this really cool thing, it's called a box subscription. Do you love those lures? We would send you a lure every single month 
from now on, you should check us out. It's a free 30 day trial or hey, you know, for the first one's 20 bucks or whatever. Mm -hmm. Boom. Then you got, then you got massive amounts of people who are interested in lures coming into your funnel, saying hello, giving you a hand raise and then moving into your continuity. Secondly is there's going to be tons of people who don't need lures, but they need a fishing pole. So it'd be like, Hey guys, we're doing this really cool deal on fishing poles today. Save a hundred dollars off. It's amazing. You're going to love this. Grab this pole. So all these people who need poles come in, by the way, Hey, you're going to need lures with your pole. Okay. Mm -hmm. We do this really cool thing. It's called a subscription box where we send you lures every single month. Once you can become a member of that, let us know how you love it. We're looking for beta testers. Check it out. See if the lures catch you more fish. We'd love to hear your feedback, right? Mm -hmm. Or tackle boxes. People who don't need lures, they don't need fishing poles, they got it all. Now we're selling tackle boxes. Hey guys, we got a really cool deal on tackle boxes today. Check it out. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Oh, by the way, your, your tackle box is going to come empty. So we got to do something to fill that bad boy up. Oh, that's good. So how about <laughs> we send you lures every single month to fill your tackle box up? It's going to be absolutely outstanding. You're going to absolutely love it. You're going to catch more fish. It's going to be super awesome. And it's just 20 bucks a month. So now I went and casted a wider net, right? Because when I'm just selling a box, a box, a box, a box, or a Dollar Shave Club, Dollar Shave Club, like everybody knows what Dollar Shave Club is, right? It's a club. I either one in or one out. But if I'm spending money prior to the ask, I have a higher take on the continuity piece, right? We're getting, we're getting around 18% take on our continuity program through the funnel, right? Hmm. Standard average is three. So anytime you look at, anytime you look at somebody with a front end continuity offer, it's 3%. I'm shocked it's even that high. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. That's uh, it, the average. Yeah, it's like, it's like Shopify stores. Like the average is like under 3%, probably close to one to 2% conversion yeah. rates. It's like, yeah. why would, why ever send traffic to a Shopify store? Like they're nice to have, um, just there for the catalog stuff. But like, I would yeah. never pay for traffic to go to a funnel. Absolutely. But, um, I, I want to be respectful of your time. We're almost at an hour here. Oh, it's good. We got, we'll get a little Instagram going. Oh, Let's hold on. I got to do it too. I want to do a little Instagram. Legend. Pop. And Peter Cruz <laughs> podcast. What's the name of the podcast? E-commerce empire builders. Oh, there you go. E-commerce. Go follow that guy. <laughs> Damn. All right, Trey, you're going to have to do your shout out now. All right. <laughs> Instagram. Oh, so are on tag, live with Trey tag, right now. Instagram tag. <laughs> Trey, where can they find you at? Just up on this board. It's nuts. <laughs> where can they find you at? Oh, man. TreyLlewellyn.com. That's the easiest. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> that's where you should go. Of all the places. Yeah, let's hit, let's do it. Let's do uh, let's do one last question. We'll, yep. we'll rock. So, last question here. Um, like, what book changed your life? Like your business and life, and kind of gave you a new perspective on mm. it. Like you could see, I like books. Oh, you love books. <laughs> yeah. So the bit a big one that. Um, so I read this book after after we were really, really into business, and it was a good time for me to hit it. Um, but then I'll give you one that's that's right behind it. I got to get the title because it's a long, crazy title. But it was, it was written by a guy called Mr. X. But it was the it is the um, oh, the secrets. I have it in the other room. It's amazing. Secrets of it's a Jay Abraham book, and and I'll tell you the backstory. It's money making secrets of marketing genius Jay Abraham. And it's a blue blue cover book, and um, sells for about 150 to 300 bucks. But it'll change it'll change your business, change your life. It is it is it's a book that was really really well done uh, by a student of Jay Abraham's. So we mentor with Jay Abraham, great guy, love him to death. And this guy also did it, but he took everything that Jay taught and like put it into a book. And you can't read two pages and not have to close it and go implement something. Okay. That's how powerful that book is. And it just gives you idea after idea after idea of how to change or integrate or add or, or substitute something inside or outside your business to like ex ex excel it, like, like rocket ship it. It's, a, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I'd finish it, to be honest, because every time I pick the damn thing up, I read two pages and it takes me four months to go implement that thing. Right. It's not a it's not a book where you read it from front to cover. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. It's a it's a it's like philosopher notes is really what it comes down to. I think it's about 300 pages of big, long text. It's a big, heavy book. Now, a good book that you can read uh, front to back is getting everything you can out of everything you got. Love that book. Yeah, that one. So good. Yeah, it's really good. 
That one's that one's you can read. So that like think of that one and then condense that book into like three pages and then you got this book, Mm -hmm. which is that. Yeah, that I love that book. It's great. I'm definitely gonna pick up that other one. Um I'll have to check it out on uh I'll have to check it out probably on like eBay, I'm assuming probably get it on. Yeah, this one there's one on Amazon right now. Yeah, it's like people complain, like I know like breakthrough advertising was probably one of the best advertising books I've written, but it's like 400 bucks, you know, it's like, yeah, you but yeah, Kevin, it, Kevin's it value. Exactly. Exactly. It's an investment, not a cost, but all right. Um, so any final words? No, Where man, people find just you? keep doing what you're doing. Keep following this guy. Like you got some good <laughs> Thanks, stuff, man. man. Like keep rocking, like keep building, keep growing. You've, you've done like, it's really cool to see how you've built a business, sold it. That's great. You know, the entire process and just now you can go repeat that. You can scale it. You saw what didn't work and what worked, right? Mm-hmm. And you should you should just do you should write a book or or do a podcast or some sort of like documentary on what that looked like, what that felt like, the big wins, the big losses, and uh, and just you know tell your story because I think these guys, your listeners here, want to hear something like that because mm-hmm. it's not <clears throat> it's not uh, rainbows and unicorns, not at all, you know? not like, at oh, all. Oh wow, you sold your business for millions of dollars, you lucky son of a, <laughs> right? Like mm-hmm. I wish I could win the lottery someday. And you're like, bro, I, like, no, it's not even like that. Like, I, there was nights that I couldn't even sleep. There was nights that I felt I was going to go to jail the next day. There was nights that, you know, I didn't know what the next phone call was going to be. I was, I was, there was nights that I didn't even want to open my laptop to see the email that was about to come in, right? Yeah. Like, you think, you think you got it hard. Let me tell you, let me tell you my story. No, love that, yeah. love that. All right, so where can people get in touch with you if, if somebody wants some more information? Man, I mean, TreyLewellen.com if you want to visit that, but just keep following you, bro. That's all I got to keep <laughs> awesome. doing. Keep, dude, I appreciate First of all, I, I appreciate it so much, dude, for taking yeah, some time. I know you're really busy. Um, and honestly, you're somebody I looked up to as a mentor uh, when I was start really in the grinding stage of that fishing business. And you kind of were like that inspiration to be like, yeah, hey, this stuff does work. You just got to keep putting in the time and actually working at it. Like nothing is free, you know? Yep. That's absolutely right, man. Keep hustling. I love it. Awesome, dude. Thank you so much again.